Hey, hi, and hello, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. And it's time for a weekly track roundup in a different space and a different setup. I know it's kind of naked right now, but eventually we will sort of change that up. Uh, another thing that is different right now is uh, me being sick. I am stuffy. I am sniffly. I am under the weather. Any coughing or... Uh, that happens over the course of this video. That is the reason why. Uh, so <laughs> without any further ado, it's time for a weekly track roundup. You guys know what it is. Uh, however, I felt about a myriad of songs that have dropped over the past week plus. Uh, hated them, loved them, felt somewhere in between. Either way, they're all linked down below so you can check them out for yourself. And uh, also link down below our Turntable Lab link. If you uh, use that to buy some vinyl or buy some turntable stuff, we could kick back from it. And uh, also our Patreon page. If you uh, go over there and sign up for a certain tier, you can get some extra bonus monthly content while supporting us in the process. That'd be great. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, and our YouTube Shorts page. Follow over there as well. Uh, I know we've sort of slowed down on Shorts content uh, as of late, but uh, that's mostly maybe uh, blah, 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 uh, that's mostly been because of the move and me just like feeling under the weather. We'll get back to it ASAP. Moving on to uh, one shout out that we have from Austin. Uh, this is for the Autechre AE Live 2022 uh, bundle which is a bunch of live sets that are like a more chaotic version of the 2016-2018 uh, soundboards, which were kind of moody as described by Austin and uh, uh, her favorite thing they've done up until this point. So again, link down below so you can check out this uh, bundle, this project. And uh, yeah, cool. Thanks uh, to Austin for sending that over as a shout out. All right, worst tracks of the week. We have a handful. We have a few. They are as follows. Uh, we have one, a new one from the streets. Uh, unfortunately, we are being hit with a very mediocre cut over here in terms of awkward production, awkward talking and rapping. Uh, it's just not as smooth or as fiery or as exciting as, uh, you know, somebody who's been listening to the streets for years uh, would anticipate, you know, a new street song to be, but it is what it is, I suppose. Moving on from there, uh, we have a new one from Skrillex uh, with a few other artists in the mix. Uh, of course, Flo Dan, but also Peekaboo and uh, G-Rex. Uh, yeah, you know, we have like a grime dubstep blend on this one. And uh, look, I, I don't think it's particularly good. Definitely far from some of Flo Dan's best lyrics. And uh, a lot of the bass, a lot of the wubs come across, in my opinion, uh, kind of goofy and uh, don't sync up with the uh, uh, rhythm of Flo Dan's rhyme all that well. Uh, it just sort of seems kind of off in some places, but you know, uh, let's just move on. All right. We also have a new one from Guns N' Roses. Uh, yeah, of course they're not sounding too great after all these years. Perhaps is the title of the track. It's got some big guitars, big piano rock kind of bit, you know, thing. Sorry, sick brain, just going crazy here. Uh, Axl Rose is sounding horrible. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not too sick, uh, to hear that or to notice that, you know, if, if uh, if I get so sick that I think the song sounds good, call 911. I'll say that. All right, moving on from there. Uh, we have a new one from Flo Millie, who is just kind of like, you know, redoing, uh, um, you know, the, the, the milkshake beat um, with a much worse and a much less interesting song, um, you know, verses that sort of run like a freestyle. I usually like Flo Millie's bars and her energy and her flow, but, uh, you know, I feel like she's a... Uh, really just not kind of doing this beat all that much justice, in my opinion. I, I would have much rather heard her over an instrumental that, you know, sounds more specific than, uh, is more specific to her, uh, rather than hear her kind of like rehash and oldie. Uh, moving on from there, we have a new one from Chemical Brothers with Beck in the mix. A new album on the way. Uh, not that this track has me excited or anything, because, uh, the whole thing sounds like um, music that a cult would rave to, I, I think is like probably the best way to uh, describe this song. It's annoying and just feels a little unnerving and not in a way that I think they uh, actually uh, uh, anticipated for it to be. And, uh, you know, the, the overdubs and the layers on Beck's vocals are just like really kind of annoying. And, and again, I think kind of contribute to that weird cult-like feel. Uh, and again, not in a flattering way. Uh, let's move on to the tracks that I thought were meh. 
not crazy about them myself, but you might enjoy them more than me. They are as follows. Uh, we have a new one from Wolves in the Throne Room, black metal outfit, West Coast black metal outfit, Wolves in the Throne Room. A new EP on the way, and if this song over here is, you know, an example of what we're in for, I, I think this is going to be a very mild project. Twin Mouth Spring is the title of this thing, and uh, the drums are not hitting. The atmosphere is not that great. Some of the acoustic bits sort of smother the rest of the instrumentation in the mix. I'm just not really wowed by this piece, honestly. I think, uh, you know, it's it's definitely the band going back in a more atmospheric direction, uh, but the atmosphere is not the best recipe, I suppose. Uh, moving on from there, we have uh, Shabazz Palace's uh, Ishmael Butler coming through with a new album very soon. So it looks like it's going to be a very short one uh, for Sub Pop Records. And, um, you know, look, I like the production on this one. Uh, Butler's rapping and vocals on the front end pitched, you know, almost chipmunk style. Um, not too bad, but there is a um, feature on the back end of the song from Royce the Choice, a Seattle rapper, I understand, um, that just comes across as very weak very awkward just not really it honestly i just think it's not uh, a great performance and sort of uh, uh weighs the track down but uh, still binoculars uh, is the name of the track and uh, again new album on the way this year so uh look out for that all right we have a uh, a new track off of an ep that just got released from pop singer and songwriter and tiktok star addison ray and uh yeah this one features charlie xcx uh but i don't think the song really has much for the charlie fans i think they're probably going to be bored by this one because as far as pop standards go uh, this is pretty mild this is pretty average nothing really all that special or interesting about it it's just um super basic i mean certainly you know well produced and well put together it sounds professional grade but is there much flavor on it? Is there much personality to it? Not really, sadly. I think there's a far more interesting pop out there right now. Uh, we have a new one from Polo G, who is uh, pretty much still functioning with the same exact form formula, the same flow, the same pianos, the same everything. Uh, it's not too bad, but, uh, you know, look, it's, it's, it's not standing out or anything like that. I do continue to appreciate his heartfelt lyrics, but, um, you know, it's just sad after all of these years to hear him continue to uh, just paint himself into a corner. I just don't know why the guy doesn't have any sort of like, you know, inkling to try something different, I guess. Uh, moving on from there. We have a new one from Lorraine, who, if you guys remember her uh, last full-length LP, it was a cool, interesting, and creative blend of R&B and art pop and ambient music and various experimental shades of, of stuff. And uh, we have our first taste of a new album cycle over here with Pet Rock. And while I did like the sounds, which were super nostalgic and dreamy and kind of gummy, a little psychedelic as well, I didn't really think the song at the core of it shown through all the muck and all of the, uh, you know, weird drippy sound play. Uh, again, sound play of it is cool, but, uh, I think there wasn't really uh, much of a tune to kind of hold on to, uh, by the time the whole thing was over. Uh, moving on from there, we have a triple from Mr. Gene Dawson, singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, producer. And while uh, each song has kind of their own different personality and everything, um, what's kind of missing, I think, is like that bite, that slightly aggressive flavor to make, you know, the, the smoothness and the poppiness of his, you know, rock tracks and, and uh, you know, poppier cuts, you know, kind of, kind of feel like they have a, a bit of gruffness or something that feels specific to him. These new tracks, uh, to me, are just coming across like a little too washed out. Um, I just don't feel like they bring the level of personality that, uh, you know, we've heard from some of the bigger bangers off of his last full-length record, uh, or even off of his uh, breakout album. So, you know, I, I think this is uh, kind of missing something, honestly. It's, it's missing something in terms of uh, uh, flavor. It's missing something in terms of tangibility, because it just feels a little too disembodied and spacey, I suppose. All right, uh, we have a new one from um, Jane Remover over here. Uh, Lips is the name of the track. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to see this project kind of continue to evolve. Uh, this is definitely one of the more lo-fi and shoegazy songs that have, uh, you know, come from this artist so far. Lips is the title of it. I like the ending. It's super thick. It's super heavy. It's very blissful and I think uh, euphoric in a way. But the lead up up until that point uh, gives us a lot of... Um, 
very odd and malformed kind of layering up vocal leads and harmonies that I think are a bit of a mismatch, honestly. Uh, it, it just seems like some very awkward vocal arranging work, I suppose. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, hopefully there's a bit more clarity on uh, subsequent tracks when we hear the uh, entirety of this project. Love this uh, art, though. This art is uh, stellar. This art is fantastic. All right, moving on from there, we have a new one from Future Islands as well. Future Islands doing Future Islands, very soft, very moody, very low-key synth pop with some very, very, very dramatic lead vocals from Sam. Uh, not their biggest, poppiest single or anything like that, but uh, you know, if you love to hear the band in kind of a low-key and somewhat romantic state, uh, this is going to be the song for you. I was just expecting something that hit a bit harder, I suppose. Uh, we also have a new one from Mountain Goats, who uh, John Darnielle, frontman John Darnielle, has uh, kind of teased toward this new album album as being something that is going to be uh, uh, super ornate instrumentally, maybe a little opulent. Uh, one of the biggest projects yet that the Mountain Goats have put out in terms of just, again, layering orchestrations, uh, instrumental presentation, and a fresh tattoo is the name of this new cut over here. And honestly, I, I feel like I'm not too crazy about this one, even if there are some elements to it that I appreciate. Um, I like the last single a lot more. The reason this one sort of fell for me is that uh, it, it did kind of manifest a worry that I had for this album. And that's that, you know, all these orchestrations would come in and, and somehow sound tacked on and maybe a little bit like, you know, musical theater or something like that. And I think we're kind of bordering on that a little bit on this track honestly i think it's um you know missing a little fire uh from the instrumentation it seems a little tame it seems a little too overly arranged and on top of that john's voice is kind of succumbing in the mix too. a lot of these strings as well which i'm not uh, too crazy about uh, we have a new one from Dochi over here as well. booty drop is the name of it uh you know listen it's, it's an ass shaking banger and it's fine. It's just very by the numbers for this style of track. And I feel like up until this point, Dochi has made herself out to be who ha made herself someone who um, kind of has capabilities and talent and style beyond that. Or even if she was to do something like this, she would kind of put an interesting twist or spin on it. And I just don't think that happens on this track. Uh, frankly, it kind of sounds like a song Doja Cat would have uh, dropped a few years ago, something like that. But, you know, it's, uh, can't win them all, I suppose. Uh, we have a new one over here from DJ Shadow, which is a, uh, a very punchy, beat-heavy little synth odyssey. Ozone Scraper is the name of this one. I, I guess he's dropping a mostly instrumental album very soon uh, this year. So if you're a big DJ Shadow fan, you can look forward to that. Uh, I think it's okay. You know, it's interesting that DJ Shadow can pull this kind of thing off, obviously. But, you know, um, as far as like general standards for this genre of music goes, I'm not like blown away by it or anything like that. But, uh, you know, it's some cool instrumental background music. And again, a lot of cool uh, vintage synths. All right, uh, moving on from there, Coffin, Australian band Coffin, Australia Stops album on the way. And uh, Factory Man is the title of this track that I want to point you guys to. Uh, look, I'll say this, it's a little basic in terms of like its influences. I wouldn't say this is like, you know, revolutionary. It's not reinventing the wheel or anything like that, but this is a balls to the wall, nasty rock track with some gruff ass lead vocals. Think Idols, uh, think Motorhead, think something like that. You'll, you'll probably be down uh, with what this band has to, uh, has to offer. Um, you know, check it out. It's uh, pretty fun. Even if I'm not like, you know, uh, blown away by what the band is doing in concept, it's still a fun listen. All right. Um, and also, you know, album on the way, obviously. Also on the way, we have a 10th anniversary edition of the debut Churches album. We have like some, you know, extras uh, coming out from it. Um, you know, this one, uh, it's okay. You know, I, I guess it's like pretty apparent why it is an extra and why it wasn't placed on the original album. But, uh, you know, uh, Manhattan is uh, certainly worth checking out for Church's fans all the same. And uh, we have a new one from Baroness as well. Shine is the title. Uh, you know, these tracks off of the new album, the upcoming album, have been kind of hit or miss, hit or miss for me. I feel like this one in particular, um, you know, the progression was uh, maybe a little too winding and convoluted. It didn't hit as hard as I would have liked it to uh, because the band was maybe kind of like, you know, falling prey to a lot of those uh, uh, indulgent and progressive tendencies that, um, you know, they, they, they do from time to time. Uh, and also we have a new one from A. Savage of uh, Parquet Court's fame, Elvis and the Army. It's our second taste of this uh, forthcoming album. And yeah, it's just kind of your standard, uh, very one-dimensional, somewhat jangly little garage rock song. With some uh, introspective lyrics. It's, it's not too bad, but, um, you know, I, I enjoyed the uh, Thanksgiving track uh, uh, quite a bit more. Still looking forward to the album. 
album when it drops. All right, let's move on to the best tracks of the week. We have a handful of those. Well, not a handful, much more than a handful. Let's see how, let's see how fast we can go. We have a new one over here from Wild Nothing, which I think is actually one of the poppiest and most hard-hitting uh, tracks to ever come out of this project, kind of throwback 90s dance beat, really lush and grand instrumentation surrounding that, and some of the most upfront vocals on any Wild Nothing song ever, Headlights On. Uh, it's a pop pop. I promise you, I promise you. Uh, we have also an over, a new one over here from Tanache Needs. Uh, this one is very smooth, it's very low key, but there's something very funny and playful and uh, snappy about it. Uh, the music video on the track is especially fun too. I think she's really been killing it with these new singles. I'm uh, looking forward to hearing uh, uh, how the album shapes up for sure. Uh, this is like really some of her most like personality intensive stuff uh, I've ever heard, honestly. Um, moving on from there, uh, Sufjan Stevens has a new album, a proper new album on the way with singing and songwriting and all that stuff. Uh, apparently this new record is supposed to be a very ornate one instrumentally. Uh, Javelin is the title from what I understand. And uh, So You Are Tired is the title of this track. And it is uh, lush instrumentally. It's lovely. It is pretty, pretty, pretty. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, uh, grand and gorgeous, like uh, many of Stevens's best tracks tend to be. All right. Uh, we also have a track from this uh, upcoming album that I'm, that I'm very excited for uh, from Sprain. Uh, this newest uh, single, this newest taste over here, uh, We Think So Ill of You, is a, a really insane noise rock banger with some absolutely manic and off the wall uh, lead vocals. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, really excited to hear how this album from the Flenser uh, shapes up because, uh, um, you know, everything that I've heard so far from it, uh, it's just coming across as a uh, Totally fire, honestly. Totally fire. All right, uh, Soccer Mommy has a new covers EP on the way, and we are getting a taste of that via this uh, Taylor Swift cover of I'm Only Me When I'm With You. Uh, and, you know, she kind of redoes it in your typical Soccer Mommy, sad indie rock girl vibe. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like the song translates well uh, to that sound. So, you know, if, if that's your kind of thing, if you're into Soccer Mommy, if you're into your boy genius, your so on and so forth, you're, you're in, and also if you're into Taylor Swift, uh, you're probably going to dig on this cover. Try it out. All right, a few more left. Uh, we have a new one from Spiritual Cramp, which is really like the punk album I am looking forward to the most, uh, you know, for the rest of this year, at least as of right now. Uh, Talking on the Internet is the name of the cut, and it is wild, it is fun, it is poppy. Uh, the lead vocals have kind of a goofy, almost like post-punky quality to them as well. I think Spiritual Cramp is really killing it. That recent track with RXK Nephew was fire too, so, you know, they, they've been uh, coming across super creative on these new cuts. Um, we have Pain of Truth. Hardcore and metalcore outfit, Pain of Truth, uh, Not Through Blood, uh, new record on the way. They have this uh, new song over here, You and Me, featuring Freddie from Madball. So it's, it's, it's really like, you know, hardcore metalcore royalty on uh, this new track over here. The breakdowns are sick. The vocals are good. Uh, kind of seems like a generational passing the torch kind of thing going on here with this track. And uh, yeah, it just kind of kicks ass. Just really great hardcore metalcore. Moving on from there, we have uh, the opening track from the forthcoming Panopticon album, which I believe is going to be dropping in November. And uh, yeah, you know, it's it's a very uh, moody instrumental cut that dramatically builds things up for the following tracks and everything like that. But, uh, you know, still, it's, it's a very nice arrangement and, uh, you know, impressive that uh, after all these years uh, that we're still, you know, getting uh, lush instrumental passages on Panopticon. Opticon albums. Uh, definitely one of the best American black metal projects still operating today, that's for sure. A uh, new album again uh, in November. Uh, we have a new one from OMD, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, the legendary synth pop outfit is back. New album on the way, Bauhaus Staircase is the title of uh, our first taste of this upcoming album. And yeah, it's just like a really great straight, straightforward piece of synth pop. I feel like they're working with a lot of the same formulae uh, that they always have over the years, but they're still sounding good and excited uh, doing it. The production sounds modern and everything like that, but I feel like all the passion and energy uh, that made their past work uh, so exciting and so cool is uh, definitely uh, alive and well on this new cut, that's for sure. All right, uh, we have a new one over here from uh, LSD XOXO. Uh, J'adore is the name of the cut. Uh, if you're looking for a dance track that is in your face, that is queer, that is wild, that is out there, uh, you're going to want to listen to this. This one is uh, uh, quite the bop. Uh, we have also a new one from uh, Kristen Hader or Kristen, a uh, reverend Kristen Michael Hater, formerly Lingua 
Ignota uh, is coming through with a new album uh, very soon. Saved, our first taste of it. Uh, All My Friends Are Going to Hell. Now, this is sounding like, you know, from what we're hearing on this new song, uh, it's, it, this is going to be a very different album from uh, Miss Hater. This track over here, uh, All My Friends Are Going to Hell, is very folky, is very raw. It's just pretty much pianos and vocals. And uh, it's very lo-fi as well. It sounds like they, uh, you know, kind of like uh, uh, came together with a very messy, noisy tape recording on this one as well. Uh, It sounds uh, very chaotic. And, um, you know, there's obviously huge elements of, uh, you know, religiosity coming through in the lyrics as well. It's sort of like an old world kind of story about how, again, your friends are going to hell. And, uh, you know, it's, it's almost like a cautionary tale in a sense. And, um, yeah, it's again, very raw, very strange, uh, definitely not as built out or as ornate or as lush as uh, a lot of the stuff that we have sort of like known from, uh, you know, hater up until this point. But, uh, you know, at this point, considering that we're going under a different name and the lingua ignota project has, uh, been said to be over, I just expected something different regardless of what it was going to be. So I guess we'll see how the rest of this album shapes up. All right. uh, Moving on from there, we have a new one from uh, Jamila Woods over here, which I think is uh, one of her poppiest cuts in a while. It's a great, uh, you know, dance and pop and neo soul blend. Uh, Boomerang is the title of this one. It goes, it goes, it goes, it goes, it goes. Uh, We have a new one over here from uh, Irreversible Entanglements, a jazz uh, and experimental music project that uh, features more mother that I've shouted out on the channel a few times. Uh, This new cut over here, Our Land Back, is uh, one of many to be featured on this upcoming album. And uh, yeah, it sort of faces the uh, politics of exploitation, displacement uh, with some beautiful and moving jazz instrumentation and also a very dire spoken word from more mother. And uh, yeah, it's a hard hitting track. It's very dark. It's very moody and uh, very, very, very obviously serious. All right. uh, We have a new one over here from a project that I haven't talked about in a while. I heard their debut. They're very low fi strange, like little kind of wonky keyboard pop review, uh, debut is what I want to say. Sick brain. Sorry. And they came out with a follow-up, but I didn't actually hear the follow-up. It just sort of like, you know, uh, flew by me, but, uh, Favel is Glock Glock. Uh, sorry. I'm, uh, I'm not even pronouncing it anywhere near correct. Probably. Look, I think they're sounding really good. Obviously raw and lo-fi like, you know, that early stuff that, uh, sort of put, uh, the duo on the map. It's just very strange, playful, Frenchy pop with uh, a lot of interesting and uh, very virtuous and impressive um, keyboard playing uh, throughout these tracks. And um, yeah, you know, I'm liking the uh, uh, odd little personality these songs are bringing to the table, and I'm liking uh, uh, pretty much everything about them. They're just odd, they're fun, they're quirky. And um, yeah, I'm just uh, running low on fuel here, so I'm going to. Uh, go to the next two. Uh, we also have a new track over here from an album that is uh, dropping very soon via 4AD, I believe. Uh, Anjamil uh, Animal is the uh, title of this track. I believe I've shouted out the last single from this project and dug it. Uh, this one as well uh, is pretty good. It's like almost like an acoustic protest kind of ballad. Uh, shot at white liberals in there in the lyrics as well. And uh, yeah, it's a very bold kind of in your face song that, uh, you know, has a strong tune to it and a strong statement to it as well. And uh, definitely a, a respect that for sure. It's got something to say. It says it and it says it well. And uh, yeah, you know, I think it's a, a nice, uh, interesting little raw change of pace from the uh, last single that we heard. And uh, finally, we have uh, Al Green covering Lou Reed's Perfect Day and doing a pretty damn good job at it. I'll say that. So it's an interesting little revision. Al commented on uh, this song, kind of putting him in a good mood and uh, just being a very, you know, good song to him. You know, to me, the songs always kind of had, kind of had more of a melancholy vibe, especially on the instrumentation. But uh, because Al, I think, has such like a positive, sweet view of the song, his instrumental interpretation of it as well, I think uh, comes across very warm and very positive too, uh, which I think, you know, makes for um, a kind of cool interp- interpretation. So, so yeah, you know, Al Green, Perfect Day, dope little cover of uh, one of my favorite songs of all time, honestly. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it. That is going to be it. That's the weekly track roundup, y'all. Hopefully you got some good recommendations out of this video. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Over here next to my head, another video you can check out. You're the best. Moi, Anthony Fantano tracks forever.